Welcome to Bendy. Join your two favorite transatlantic weirdos, Andy from Ireland and Beth from the USA, as we take you on a journey through every topic imaginable with insight, vulnerability, and fart jokes, or in other words, the complete human experience. Hello, and welcome to Bendy, a podcast about being flexible in all of the ways that means. Thanks for joining us. My name is Andy Young, and I'm one of your drowsy, languid hosts. Joining me, as always, is our other drowsy and languid host, <laughs> Beth Martin. Beth, a pleasure as always. Oh, Andy, it's such a pleasure. I'm so drowsy today. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and I languid like, and yeah. lethargic. <laughs> I mean, it's a day that ends in a Y, <laughs> so we're bound. <laughs> Every day is a drowsy day. Every day is a drowsy house. day. Oh, is I it need to copyright t- this immediately. I know. <laughs> I can help you with that. Is it okay, is it the time of year or is it just life in general makes us sleepy? Uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, I think. Um, you know, all of the above for sure. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, but I think that specifically this time of year, it's getting, especially over here, it's getting darker earlier and it's just, you know. What time? It's time to be. What time, <laughs> what time? What time does the sun go down? Like at the minute, uh-huh. about four, four thirty or so. So Mike is home. I'm already like, well, let's just talk crack. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike's home. Let's get into it. And uh, he was telling me this story about how he was sitting in a like a boardroom with his boss, and this it was boss was like, why, like, what's going on? Like, it's getting dark in here all of a sudden. Like, you know, did the light shift? Or and he's yeah. like, oh no, it's two thirty, and the sun's going down. <laughs> <laughs> what in, in where you are right in, now? No, he is? he was in Portland. So oh, Portland. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. that's intense. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like by four four thirty, it, usually it's like, yeah, that's it's crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, we get these as a result these like awesome like sunsets and stuff like that. The sky's so colorful, so like nice. these orangey sort of like even like these even Ritz blue sometimes. It's really lovely. Yeah, we um, get. So, we get that here more, like if there's, yeah. if there's, well, if there are clouds in the sky, which <laughs> I'm oh. such a bitch. We never get clouds. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sun, we, sun, sun, we have, sun. We, we have your clouds too. Uh-huh. Yeah, you do, clouds. you do. So uh, just, yeah, you're welcome. But uh, there are some Thank today you. and um, it's, but I know well, it's well, going to well. be a beautiful, I know, well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Patchy clouds, Andy. Yeah. Patchy. Okay. Can I tell you something? Of course. So I watched the movie Gran Turismo last night. Oh, interesting. I fucking loved it. I I loved it. It's so good. I didn't know any, like I knew nothing. I know, uh, right. I know about the game. Sure. Um, But I didn't know like the story behind this, like that it's based on a true story. This actually happened to. Yeah. And I, I didn't know that Gran Turismo was, like, actually, like, a simulation and not, a, yes. like, a video game. Um, I don't think I've ever played it myself. Or if I have yeah, it, it's you fine. know. It's, it's not my thing, but, like, I have played it. But I, simulation games are just, yeah, not interesting to me. Right. But the story and the, just, like, the story, the way that this, you know, this kid who liked video games and wanted to be a race car driver but couldn't actually afford it. And then, yes. I don't know how you pronounce it. We pronounce it Nissan. <laughs> yeah. Nissan. I think we do that too. Nissan. 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 Yeah. But uh, just the fact that they were like, let's try this out. And granted, they were like, well, we've got 90,000 people that are playing the game. And like, you we yeah. can interest them in like a Nissan car. That'd be like, it was a big, big marketing ploy. Not ploy. Marketing concept that worked really well. Because this kid is now like... He's had like 200 races. He's like the top 50 wow. race car drivers like ever. And he's just so it's, sweet. So I followed him. Nice. I followed him on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> and I, I'm I, not, I mean, like, it's so good. I highly recommend it. It gave me, it okay. gave me a lot of, I'm not skipping to joy, but it made me happy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I, I remember seeing the trailer and thinking this is not for me. And I didn't like the look of the trailer, but um, you know, I um the they had some actors that I quite liked mm-hmm. and um You're like Legolas director, Exactly, Legolas and David Harbour as well. I love David Harbour. And he was awesome. great. He's always yeah, yeah, he was good. 
he's reliably great and um but i and then then i found out like way later after seeing the trailer that it was like neil blomkamp who has made some great movies some iffy movies but like he's tends to be pretty visually interesting so it was like hmm maybe this would be would be worth a look well it, but i haven't got around to it so it's interesting too because in america we're all about nascar yes and i was like what kind of racing is this this is insane they're going like 380 kilometers in yeah. the driving in the rain for like a 24 hour race where they're like switching drivers out and they're going for 24 hours i'm like that would never happen here like oh, was that Le Mans? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They didn't mm-hmm. even know what that was until last night. Yeah. So now I'm hip to it. I'm like, yeah. oh yes, it is. And you're like, you're that like, course oh, is Le Mans. insane. This year's Le Mans was <laughs> <laughs> so fascinating. But it's like uh, it's crazy because because NASCAR like that th- there's a formula. Your car has to yeah. be these specifications. All the like, I don't know what what kind of racing it is. It's like GT Dare, or like I don't even know. Sorry, uh, I listeners. Tell you I just, Mon, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a baby race car uh, lover. So there'll be some, there'll be some car heads screaming. At there us right there now. will be. Uh, how could she not know that? But like here, like if it rains, they stop the race. Yeah. And yeah, like over there. no, it's crazy it's, dangerous. We have. Um, they, they do the same thing. Uh, there's a lot of like motorbike racing in Northern mm-hmm. Ireland mm-hmm. in particular. Oh, yeah. And they do they don't stop and it rains here a lot. Yeah. And like we have tons of tons of people uh, end up dead as a result of motorbike racing, as you can imagine. Um to the extent that like some of the big fixtures um um have stopped happening or they're in danger of not. There's one called the Northwest, which is a really big deal in Northern Ireland and they just didn't think they were going to get the insurance for it because insurance keeps going up and up because, as I say, the amount of people that get seriously injured or die. It's scary. Who's the insurance company that will back anybody? Like Lords of, oh, Lon- yeah. Lords of London? They, yeah, I think that is I it. Because the, like, they, they yeah. pack up Jackie Chan's body and things like that. And like, <laughs> and, I think Burning Man, too. I'm probably yeah, wrong, oh, but really? like, no one will insure them. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. So that's um, that's my crack, and and I'm packing. Uh, I'm in packing hell. Yeah, I'll bet. So we're leaving. Oh, oh, sympathy for bad. I know, boo hoo! I'm going to, going to leaving the country for three weeks. I have to pack. Oh, so sad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, What's the crack with you? The crack with me is because so and because we've been talking about it. Um, I the my choir had their concert last week. Yay. It went very well. Congratulations. It was really fantastic. I'm really proud of feedback. you guys. Like, for real. You. you did something really big. It really is. And it's kind of one of these things whenever you step back from it and you're like, wow, okay. I mean, considering it was only a conversation about seven months ago and how far we've come mm-hmm. and actually put something on stage and it to be quite successful and, uh, you know, great feedback from the choir, great feedback from the audience is pretty fantastic. So, you know, but like, so like I, in classic Andy style, I did what, like about 12 weeks of work and I got like about two, maybe three hours of feeling pretty good about myself. And then, <laughs> then just back to my regular shit, you know, but, but <laughs> totally worth it. I'm really happy um, with uh, how it went. And like, as I say, I got so many kind words as well from people as well. So it was, it was, it was pretty fantastic. That's so, I, it, it creating something out of nothing is one of my favorite things to do yeah and very satisfying and just you and i both when at some point well i think this is a podcast topic but you know we've both done theater we've both done improv i've done you know choral work and it's so just like it's the best feeling being on stage and like the feeling between you and the audience is you know like you feed off each other and you feed off each other's each other's energy and like a non succubus kind of way but then there's yeah. the yeah. the post like event crash depression <laughs> yes that's uh, so fun yay i think oh my god i think that's i think i definitely want to start doing more of it it's one of the things i think i kind of wish i had done more earlier but that's kind of the direction i want to move in so let's see what happens but that was great um i then immediately went down to see some friends town in enniskillen which is uh, here's a sentence that's going to confuse a lot of people in the south of Northern Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> I've been looking at some maps. Uh, nice. 
So they, they there's a ISIS. there's definitely a border. <laughs> there is definitely a border. There is definitely a border, um, and there's their house is actually on a lock, oh. and it's really beautiful. And like they have like a decent chunk of land, and are planning to. I think they both are. Uh, they 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 make good money, but they're hoping to like. Any job that pays good money tends to be quite stressful. So the plan is to use this land to create like, you know, uh, pods and stuff like that for people. So it was really lovely to be down there. So a cult. Um, that cult, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yay! They're building these. Yeah, they're building these like ten foot high fences. Uh-huh, and they've got, uh-huh. like sniper sniper towers. And perfect, stuff like that. perfect. <laughs> and is there a leader? Uh, uh well, I mean, they're court made. Yeah, I knew you know, it. I knew it. Like, I knew I, it. Yeah. You're like, but I'm busy with I my have, choir. Yeah, that's how I'm growing my hair out and growing my beard out. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, but it was lovely and it was good they have a son who like it's funny because I, I see them maybe every six months or so and he's now four so every time I see him de- developmentally he is like so far on and like he's having full conversations with me about Star Wars and things like that and he's like telling me about Star Wars and stuff and I'm like oh wow okay <laughs> did you know <laughs> did you know so this guy's called Jabba the Hutt he is uh-huh, okay cool uh-huh. you know it's awesome actually Thank you. what else I'm wearing you can't tell but I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt right now hell yeah I can see that I can see the A-wing yeah and the, uh, yep. B-wing. yep yep <laughs> A-wing and a B-wing and I actually have an advent calendar that's the Star Wars advent calendar mm. mm-hmm. I had been doing like like the Lego kind of Star Wars I've been calendars mm-hmm. for a while, but I was just like, no. I, it's just because I have so much rubbish in my house already. I just don't need uh, um, those. And also the other alternative is uh, chocolate advent calendars, which I just don't, I don't need an extra piece of chocolate every day. Yeah. I get plenty. <laughs> I get plenty of chocolate without the extra piece. <laughs> Thank you very much. They have a, uh, for like the dad, it's all marketed towards like the dads in your life. You can get them like whiskey advent calendars where there's like a, a different whiskey yeah. of that. But it's like how much, it's a lot. We had. Uh, or not enough. Like, I don't know. We had quite a few years ago a cheese one in, uh, this was like oh. uh, the, the place. Yeah, it was pretty, it was, but it was kind of disappointing because there was only like five types of cheese that cycled through. It was a wee bit disappointing. Yeah. But, um. That was a nice idea. Um, you could get like tea ones and stuff like that, which is a very, very British thing to do. I'm like, a different that type of tea never, every day. never happen here. Just holding your teacup with one <laughs> finger and your thumb. <laughs> Pinky's up. Pinky's up. <laughs> so, Beth. Yes. Uh, the other question I need to ask you, of course, is what's occurring? Uh, what's occurring? So, um, I just want to thank you to all the people that are following us on youtube you guys are getting our i don't yeah all these things didn't matter to me before but now i'm like oh look at all these people looked at this one video of us you rock yeah talking yeah. about sharks or poop or whatever um so yeah <laughs> thank you um and then i like i googled us just to see like okay where are we in the rankings and like we're on the like if i google bendy the podcast like we're up, we're number one <laughs> Nice. Uh, but uh there's a there's like a site called Podcast Podcast Addict for people yes. that mm-hmm. and someone left left, left us a review mm-hmm. that said uh, it feels like a return to my favorite podcast formats, two friends chatting. I will continue to listen to this podcast. Hell yeah. So I was like awesome. you're getting it. Like we're doing yeah. that cuz that's that's what we're doing. That yeah, may that exactly. may need to me need to be our tagline. <laughs> Thank you, person. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's it is why I I feel like when I talk to people about other podcasts, they are latching on to themes, mm-hmm. whereas it very much for me is about the personalities of the people. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of my favorite podcasts is about American fast food, and like the vast majority of that, I will never get to taste, you know, or even encounter. Or I love, but I can, the and then I yeah, can take can, photos, but... and then you can cry. Please don't do that. <laughs> Are you rude? <laughs> it's fine. It, everything has gluten in it, and I can't do the gluten, so I can't eat uh, anything. Oh yeah, that's a good I, point. I, I'm yeah, going the, to yeah, I'm going to the land of croissants right now, and I can't eat any of it. I can't have uh, a baguette. I can't have a baguette. I can hit somebody baguette. over the head with one, but I can't actually nice. eat it. So. Will you wait till wait till they're a bit stale, and then you <laughs> can really get do some damage? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I actually have, and my friend gave me some. Uh, an update a what's a current update okay um but 
but he sent it to me in a voicemail which is terrible in terms of me so this is going to be an Andy translation of this okay because we were talking about easter eggs in a previous episode yeah. and we were talking about where they originated from it seems like they originated from lots of different types of the world uh, lots of different places in the world from different traditions and things like that but in ireland um they were um essentially it was to do with kind of for a long time, Ireland was occupied by the UK and there was landlords that owned big parcels of land. They controlled the, the populace there and uh, over Lent, they couldn't have eggs. So they would kind of, you know, hand the eggs over to the uh, uh, poor peasants, um, I think, after the season was over. So sometimes the eggs would be built and they'd be in quite bad shape. And like, here, here's some rotten of, eggs. Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, they're like sort of like, they might be fine. It's fine. Yeah. But this is as good as you're getting. <laughs> can I can I ask a really unrelated question, but related? Yeah. Do you guys refrigerate your eggs? Do I ask you this? Uh, no, we don't. Okay, we do. I don't, certainly I don't, uh, I speak from me and from other people I know, they, we don't refrigerate them, no. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it. Now, he, I'm certain I've got some of it wrong and I'll be shouted at, but hey, that's part of the fun, right? It is. Well, and I, I think... <laughs> There's like fertility in there, right? Yes. And something about, did you listen to the Jim Gaffigan? Uh, His recent one? About, no, about Easter and like. I don't think so. It's so funny. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, yeah, it's so funny. And basically like, oh uh, yeah, it's worth listening to. I'll find it for you and like put it up because it's so funny. And he's like, it's basically him trying to explain why there are Easter eggs. I don't know. The bunny lays them, but in the Easter egg, like it makes no sense. So, um, that I that is it. fascinating, and thank you to your friend for for sending that in. Yeah. So there you but go. A reminder well. to him to send them to me as a text message, please. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend. Please. I had a friend uh, send a Marco Polo, which is uh, yeah a version of not a text either. Yeah. Yeah. But um. She said that she loves listening to us. Like, she's like, you guys are in my kitchen. Like, I listen. Nice. She's she's caught up on all the episodes. So, like, I haven't actually talked to her. She probably knows more about my life right now than I've told her just because she's listening to the podcast, <laughs> yeah, which makes me yeah. feel like a really bad friend. But um, she's been my friend since fifth grade, so, like, primary school. And she just said, she's like, my favorite part is listening to you laugh. So <laughs> that nice. made me happy. I was like, I assumed it's annoying to everyone. I can't help it that I, I'm a whelper when I laugh. But um, I mean, yeah, I think we both have loud laughing exclamation, but that's nice as well. I and kinda, they're genuine, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's laughing hour. So fuck everyone. We're going to yeah, laugh. Exactly. It's going to happen. <laughs> so thank I'm you. I'm thinking. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. I love you. <laughs> Um, that's going to be the reality, you know, going forwards as we become mega stars. Anyway, we're not going to have as much time for everybody, you know. It's so true. This is this is how they. This is how we'll have our people call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My assistant's assistant will get back to right. me. <laughs> I'll hire them an assistant, so our assistant. Yeah, talk. exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess. I've got a spare hundred uh, k in my pocket somewhere. Right. Oh, it's uh, a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah uh, <laughs> yeah so so good oh, okay. things so do you want to do you want to dive into our topic this week yes yeah, so um our topic this week is about sleep and the title of this podcast is we, we so, so sleepy. sleepy we so we sleepy. sleepy beth and Andy so sleepy <laughs> so sleepy always so sleepy i think <laughs> i mean like we, we both are we are we bonded on this like Early, yeah. like it's we talk about this all we've been talking about this for years it's true and i mean it's probably like mental health and sleep are like mm -hmm. you know number one number two of the bullet yeah in terms of and i mean like they're both intimately related those two topics i think anyway as far as i'm concerned because like you know a good night's sleep really helps me massively um, and like i feel more insane whenever i'm on very little sleep very loopy at a, very loopy at a minimum yeah yeah uh what i was going to kick off with was uh just you know time and place how did you sleep last night i actually slept great yeah i slept okay you know i'm not bad i got up at seven hours which is decent ish for me yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. had a hard time so, falling asleep but i had like yeah. a little like half glass of wine and then laid back down and nice yeah that system works my system works 
There's a system. <laughs> so generally, what is your sleep like? Um, like I think like, it would be worse if it wasn't for like antidepressants and things like that. I think that like, they're like such a reliable sleep aid. Same. Um, I, uh, I, I think whenever, before I started taking them, I found that I was waking up in the middle of the night and that was very common. And <clears throat> the problem with that is I am told then I researched a little bit more and I'm told that, uh, you, that's common as you age, your sleep patterns get uh, more messed up. Waking up in the middle of the night is common. Um, there's often, you know, uh, but like. The problem with that, especially when you're working a job or, you know, you've got a family, is that that's not really compatible with modern life, unfortunately. That's um, true. Do you ever, it's like, well, do you ever wonder, like, what you, like, if you didn't have to be somewhere at any time or any place and you had no responsibilities, like, what your sleep would look like and when you would actually sleep? I, mm, I do and I like because part of me thinks I mm, you see because I find that sometimes when I'm trying to sleep is the time whenever I am I'm firing with ideas like I'm getting stuff and I'm like that's quite good or if I like sometimes go to sleep and I start thinking about a story I'm working on and I'm like I'll just think about this because it'll you know bring me down and then like oh that would be a nice thing to do. That would be a nice bit story beat. That would be a nice kind of bit of dialogue. And I like get up and I'm on my iPad typing it in. Which I'm getting better for that now. I'm actually like putting it down. So I, I, I'm thinking that like probably if I wasn't beholden to a more standard sleeping pattern, I would probably be awake more at night. Though I, I think of myself as an early riser. So I'm really not sure what that's going to look like in the future. I Yeah, I think... Like, I don't fall asleep and I don't stay asleep. So it's like, mm. usually it's one or the other, not both. Um, but I think if, if if I didn't have responsibilities, if, if like everything just kind of like lifted away, I would probably sleep from like two to six or seven. Mm -hmm. And then again, I, I probably, I, I, there's a, I can't remember the term, but there's a term where you sleep for four hours for this part of the day and four hours for this part of the day. I've heard, yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what it is in my brain garden, but uh, that I think I, I think I'm an early riser and I'm also a night owl. So I think like what it, I'm not diurnal like most people where it's like nighttime. Like my, yeah. my brain does not know nighttime is like when the sun goes down, that's your cue. Like it doesn't pick up on yeah. cues. It's just... It's, it's just like, what? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I hear you. Uh, and I have friends who, like, sleep secondly well, like, will sleep, like, nine to ten hours, and and it's, it's virtually impossible to wake them, and I'm like, oh, you, yes. <laughs> yeah, drives me crazy. Um, yeah, how good you have it. When did you start having sleep problems? I think I have always been... An early riser. I don't think I've ever slept particularly well. Um, I have a memory, and like this speaks to my personality in so many ways. But like, I remember, um, I used to uh, be such an early riser. I always have been. So like, on the weekends and stuff like that, uh, there was uh, a block of cartoons from seven a.m. to nine. You 9 were you were that annoying child. Yeah. Your parents so were like I was up. ah. I was up with like a massive bowl of cereal, just and like I would kind of be annoyed at myself if I woke if I woke past seven a.m. because I missed the cartoon that I was looking forward to, and so it's just me watching TV for like three hours straight with a big bowl of cereal, nobody to bother me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the, it's the dream. So like, from a young age, my sleep was kind of not great. Yeah, I've never slept well. Like I remember, mm -hmm. like crying before bedtime. Like bedtime was just the worst thing ever, and just because you didn't want to be away from your folks and stuff, or like I think yeah, I think I'm scared of the dark still. I think okay. it was just like a uh, fear of darkness and yeah, maybe like separation from my parents. But I remember like being little and crying, and like both my parents would just like rub my back and say my name over and over and over again until I would finally fall asleep, just like in a puddle of tears, which is so sad. But yeah. it's like, I I was just born that way. 
you know? I don't know why. And then I would, like, direct, well, we'll get into that a little bit more, but um, it's, I I basically slept on my parents' floor until, like, middle school. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I would drag my sleeping bag in, and I'd just be, like, couldn't, I couldn't sleep by myself. And I, so I would either sleep in their closet, or I would, like, drag my sleeping bag in and just, like, put it at the bottom of their bed. And they'd be like, here you are again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, I definitely had those sorts of things, but it was more related to, like, leaving the house. Like, I kind of, you know, and I was so resistant to, like, going to school and stuff like that. And really? so, like, upset about it. Yeah. You didn't like going to Crazily school? So. Mm-mm. I... I didn't mind it eventually, but I, I remember crying both, uh, you know, a lot, both kind of going to, well, I don't remember crying going to, like, nursery and primary school and stuff, but I'm told that I did, and I remember doing that even in, in high school when I was, like, 12, which mm-hmm. is, like, you know. <laughs> I mean, big boy, it's fine. Big boy by then. I was sleeping in my yeah, parents' no, room. I oh, no, I was, like, yeah. 14. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, maybe it was related to school. So, okay, so... Um, so I guess you kind of answered this, but like you're, when you fall asleep, you're thinking about like positive things typically, or you like, um, or do you, mm, mm. uh, it depends. It, I like, so like, cause I've had to think about this so much and, uh, obviously sleep is very important and trying to get there is something I have made like. I have had a lot of sort of systems in place to kind of get there. Um, I can, I feel like I can sometimes notice when I'm struggling to sleep and I notice my heart racing and I think I am better. And I think yoga's really helped with this uh, at, at slowing my heartbeat down. I can't always get there. And sometimes I, I think I've achieved it. And then I realize that I'm just back thinking about whatever kind of crazy shit. So like, you know, for example, after the night of the choir, I was just like so uh, high, like uh, euphoric, I guess, yeah. you know, and I was just thinking about... So you were saying you were euphoric? Yes. So like uh, euphoric, I guess, you know, um, thinking about the uh, night of the show <clears throat> and uh, being very excited about that and, you know, interactions I had with people and then also thinking about you know, the things that I was looking forward to and being excited for that and feeling like I'd kind of earned those things and stuff and like thinking about seeing people and the fun that we were going to have. And then I'm like, I noticed it's like, you know, one thirty or 2 a.m. And I'm like, okay, you've been like, you've been running your, you know, through your, this stuff in your mind for like an hour and a half now. It's time to like make a, an effort to kind of deal with this. So I can, you know, take a breath and, take it down a wee step I can sometimes re- help reduce my heart rate a little bit um, by just breathing steadily and kind of thinking about that I also the technique I had doesn't always work is um, imagining that you're lying in a canoe on a still lake and you're looking up and there's stars above you and I that is quite good for me I have like a kind of a, a nerdy version of that where I imagine I'm in like a kind of a cryo sleep pod and, <laughs> and like the pods like sliding over me and I'm just like <laughs> fro- frozen to sleep <laughs> that's called so yeah propofol <laughs> yeah it is yeah 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 there's, there's a guy there's a guy there's a guy right puts a cloth over my mouth <laughs> and I'm like okay thank god that's sleepy time Woo. <laughs> I wish that would happen that would be nice I know wouldn't it mm-hmm. I, know. I want somebody to like actually come up just put a sleeper hold on me and just kind of yeah 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 knock me out so a term that I hate is called sleep hygiene. Like, oh, do you, let's work on your sleep hygiene. Do you have good sleep hygiene? So do you want to talk a little bit about like things that you've tried that have or haven't worked? Um, or things that people have told you to try where you're just like, oh, my God, like never mention this to me again if you want to be my friend. Uh-huh. I am um, because I, I, I have had some luck for a while. I, like, I think all of the sort of things that are recommended to me, I end up like. Uh, defeating I guess that's a terrible way to think about it but like my brain's like oh you're not going to put me to sleep asshole <laughs> so like the uh, is it calm is the app I remember using it for a while and the, the sleep stories and stuff that I found good but then like my brain if the story I'm enjoying the story will lock into it and be like okay I want to hear Matthew McConaughey's 
lovely voice telling me this uh, the nice slow story about whatever um so i think that all you know and also um i have tried various kind of natural remedies and things like that but they work sometimes it's 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 too it's too scattershot nothing has consistently worked for me ever really i don't think what about you i mean <clears throat> I've tried, I've tried, I've been to sleep specialists, I've mm -hmm. tried medications, I've tried, I mean, it's like, you know, Benadryl, chamomile tea, Tylenol PM, like that was like high school, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which I know is unhealthy, but I wasn't sleeping. Like I, I have a diary where it's like, I was 16 and I'm like, I'm not sleeping, I'm not sleeping. And then I think like life events, like my dad's yeah. passing that definitely like exacerbated it. So I went to a sleep specialist and they were like, start wearing your sunglasses at like four o'clock so that your body starts. Yeah. So I was literally like at home wearing sunglasses in the house. And I tried that for two weeks and it didn't work at all. Right. Um, but you were so cool. For those I was years. so cool. I was so cool. It was so <laughs> annoying. I couldn't like see anything and I, I couldn't really yeah. like watch the TV or like, um, <laughs> And then, you know, tried not having electronics in the room, um, tried, uh, you know, different mattresses. Uh, at this point, like, I wake up Mike, like, I, I for a while, I, uh, a symptom of my long COVID was uh, restless legs, which is so mm -hmm, fun. Mm -hmm. So my legs were itchy all the time, Eesh. but that's gone away. Um, but I was taking medication for that. And, and I, now I'm, yeah, I, and then we did a sleep study. I've done cortisol tests to see like if your cord, my, my cortisol levels are normal for the time of day. Normally if you're, if they spike in the evening, then you have too much cortisol and that's why you can't sleep, but mine are normal. Mm -hmm. Um, so no one knows why no one can figure out why. Um, okay. and now I'm on an antidepressant that helps with sleep. So that helps. I have to take a sleep, I have to take Ambien. And then sometimes yeah. um, if I am, I, I ruminate and like the mm -hmm. what I think about while I fall asleep is like everyone dying that I love. <laughs> Cause that's wow. normal, right? Yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. where I go. That's where my brain goes. And so- it's tough. So yeah, so then sometimes I'll have to take like a, um, a Valium just to, cause my heart rate will like, I'll start having a panic attack. <laughs> before bed so fun so it's like yeah and i've like yes, i've done the meditation i, I meditate yes. like i do, do you know transcendental meditation all the things but it's like not it, for me and i think like i just have my 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 neurological issues are so weird and my chemical makeup is so so different that i yeah i need i need help and and that's in the form of medication and it for a long time um i'm just talking now but like i would no, have i was i would have to miss work like at mm -hmm. once a month at least i would call in and be like i didn't sleep last night and sorry like i would it's been four days since i slept and i can't drive the car kind of bad yeah that's wow uh -huh. Uh -huh. that's a lot that's uh -huh. a lot for anyone to deal with uh -huh. and now not working um that full-time job not not working um that's helped i think because i can nap like i texted you the other morning i think or i texted someone and there no it was my, my friend who was here a couple weeks ago and uh she's having sleep problems and she's like how's your sleep and i'm like oh no is it what well, it was you you're like i yes. think our episode should be about sleep and i'm like that's great because i just woke up from my morning nap because i yes, didn't sleep last true. night so it's like sometimes i'll take the kids to school and i'll go back to bed and hope yeah. that i can fall back asleep for a little bit you know it's yeah it's so frustrating uh, and that's yeah that really sounds like a lot and like i, I definitely think that um it sounds like you have a lot you have a tougher time with sleep than I have ever had, I think. Like, I think my sleep has already, has always been consistently not great, but at least I, I'm i pretty sure I'll at least get four or five hours on even on a bad night of something. Like, I'm fit for nothing the next day, but I, I, will, I, I will likely get that at least, you know. Um, 
<clears throat> yeah. It's, Are you uh, saying I win at not sleeping? Yeah, you win at not sleeping, I guess. <laughs> Beth wins this episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all in about. The most awful way, <laughs> right. In the most awful way possible. And <laughs> that she's not well rested enough. Uh, um, it's something I wanted to ask you was, well, I mean, I have a few sort of uh, dream related questions, but I guess my first question then is, do you dream? Um, that is a really good question. Up until I started taking this medication, like three months, August was when I started taking mm-hmm. it. I, no, I hadn't really had, like maybe once a year I would have a dream that I would remember. Yeah. And now I'm dreaming all the time. Yes, that's my experience. Yeah, too. if it's I don't nuts. take the Ambien, then I'm having these like crazy dreams. They're yeah. not always good. Yeah. Uh, usually they're not good. Like that dream I had about the royal family or like, you know, like yeah. that. It's just weird stuff. And I used to have nice dreams where I would just sit and have conversations with people. They're nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then like once I hit my 20s, mid 20s early 30s like yeah i i i i just have to do a hard shutdown um yeah but i i have a question about dreams for you but um so what about what about you um yeah it was just very much the same i very rarely remember my dreams there was one dream i had a variation of uh, many times and i can't remember it fully all i remember (laughs) the bones of it are where the darth vader was trying to steal my brain Obviously, he was looking for some, you know, something, a big juicy, intelligent brain. Right. <laughs> targeted, targeted me. <laughs> uh, but that's, I ha- I remember being scary the first time I had it. I remember having a variation on that uh, for years. And then. Um, so that was, I, a, that the, was a recurring dream where Darth Vader was coming yeah. to steal your juicy brain. Mm-hmm. Wow. I think. I, I think, I, I, again, my memory of it's patchy you now, but I feel like it was a ver- version of that. I don't think it was always Darth Vader, but it was like somebody was coming to get me uh, or, or something like that. Um, But like I have in recent years, especially since the antidepressants and stuff like that, mm-hmm. have had really uh, dream far more often. A, a kind of version of a dream that I have a lot is that I go to a place that I know and I get lost mm. and somebody gave me a translation for that it's like uh, basically I'm not uh, like fulfilling maybe some of the creative stuff or some of the things that I want to do in my heart kind of thing gotcha and I think there is there's certainly some truth to that um, but they, they were always really quite distressing but I think those dreams because they became so common I think uh, having those in recent years are my first experience where I've kind of been aware I was dreaming in the dreams. So that's my first kind of, I guess, lucid dream experience. Where you're like, I, I, I I, oh, I'm having a dream. Yeah. And maybe I can, maybe I can control it. Yes, exactly. I, oh, I, I have something I just need to get to before we, we move on. Yeah. I was reading recently about this company that is developing a a piece of software or a, a something that you know you attach onto your head as you sleep that is designed to try to help you harness lucid dreaming so get to, to do guess what so you can work while you're dreaming wow everything sucks we live in a nightmare <laughs> everything sucks that's awful but it was essentially designed for software engineers specifically so that they could harness their lucid dreams to uh, maybe code in their sleep and i'm like this is horrifying <laughs> this is horrifying so yeah i would like the 10 year study on that to see <sighs> what those humans turn into <laughs> I, and, and like i cannot see that be a su- successful business do you know what i mean it's just another sort of ugh, nightmare thing but yeah anyway I um, I have a uh, the so i have the typical dream read this is a very i've had this my whole life my teeth fall out Oh, yes, I've heard about that dream. Yeah. yeah. What is, is there it's a meaning It's basically like, yeah, you know, you're nervous about something. I think this is yeah. what, with all bad dreams. It's like there's something off or something that you're not, um, you're worried about something um, or you don't feel like you have control over something. But I really am just afraid of my teeth falling out. Yeah. Like all, I mean, that's a reasonable fear for yeah, anyone to have. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I have a small, like, my gums are small, so they had to pull yeah. five five of my teeth 
for me to get braces because I had like really bad I see. bad teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know what that feeling is like. Oof. And yeah, they didn't put me under for that, so it was just like Ooh. I was in I was I was in elementary school, so I re- I still remember it was awful. Um, anyways, so I have that yeah. dream where either my teeth are loose and I can pull them out, or they're just like falling out themselves. And then I have this other reoccurring dream where I can't really, I have this phobia. <laughs> this is, mm-hmm. it's called triophobia. Oh yes, I've heard of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's like, it's it's it's, pa- it's like patterns that are disgusting to me. Or yep. like there will be images that will gross me out and I'll, ha- I'll see those things in my dreams and I'll just be like, Ugh. like we got, um, this is super messed up, but like, you know, those little like crackers that you get that have the holes in them, you know, mm-hmm, we got mm-hmm, a set of mm-hmm. crackers and the holes were extra big. And I was like, mm-hmm. I can't eat these. I was, I was so mad. And like, and I saw a photo and like, I'll dream about like crackers with big holes, right? And be horrified. And like, I uh, saw a photo of, <laughs> have you ever seen a strawberry where the seeds are sprouting? I have, yeah, yeah. That is my horror. Yeah, okay, I can get that, yeah. So because in my dream, it'll be of, like, it's so gross, it's so gross. They, they feel kind of unreal or like, I don't know, mutated What do you something. mean yeah, they I, sprout seeds? Like, the seeds yeah. actually, like, do something. Ugh, ugh. Uh, because my parents used to have strawberry plants in the back garden so yeah you would sometimes see them and they were like whoa whoa what's happening yeah it's not, it's not yeah so, so I, I have dreams like that which um, is super weird have you ever have you ever had a lucid dream yes uh, yes how was that or is that something you remember mm. it's fine um it's usually I'm having conversations with people yeah okay but mm-hmm. it's not necessarily mm-hmm. people I want to have a conversation with I understand. Yeah. And then I'm like stuck there. Yes. And I can't be like, I got to go. Or, you know, it's like I'm stuck there sitting with them, having a conversation. Yeah. And it's just like sometimes it's awkward. Um, and I just don't want to be there. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I'm aware I, that yeah, I'm there yeah. and I'm aware it's a dream and I'm aware that like I'm not actually talking to this person. I, but I haven't figured out how to just be like, because I can't say no to anyone. Yeah. Then I really can't say no in my dreams. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that, like, we're the same. And, like, it's also you're kind of like, well, I need to be polite. Yeah. I, I can't just leave this person. Yeah. You know, even if it's a dream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I totally understand. Yeah. So, um, have you ever, ha- have you ever seen a monster? Uh, in my dream? No, I mean, in uh, real, in real life. Like, when you were a kid um, and you were like, is there, um, like... Were you ever oh, afraid? Oh, yeah, like the process sort of thing. Yeah. yeah or, 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 I see what you're saying. Um, I don't think so, no. Um, not that I can recall. And I'm sure that would be a memory that would stay with me. So, no. Like, and it's surprising to me because I was so, I'm so, I, I'm so interested in that, those things, you know, like, uh, um, such an X-Files kid when I was younger. Oh, totally. And sort of stuff. Totally. You know, so like, I'm surprised I didn't. And like, I remember having like, books and like, UFOs and also uh, paranormal uh, um, occurrences like um, spontaneous combustion and things like that, you know. So I, I think I was, I wanted it. Did it you ever happened. see those photos? Like, th- of like the, of the spontaneous. The chairs yes, and stuff? Yeah. yeah. And like yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're bo- yeah. Yeah. Like just like a pair of slippers just lying at the bottom of those chairs and these like ashes everywhere. And, and it's, it's like, like you, the, it's like the bot, you can see the, the like the outline yeah. of the body, but it's all like burnt. And yeah. they're just gone. Uh, so weird. Graham. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Have you? Did you? I did. Mm-hmm. I think this is like, I still think that there's a monster under the bed. Okay. I'm 44. Fair enough. I'm 44. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Anything's possible as far as I'm concerned. Like, I still get that feeling of like, it's dark, the lights are out, Mike's already in bed, it's just me up, you know? Yeah. And then I have to like jump into bed as fast as I can because yeah. it, it'll get me. Um, but I remember, like, our house uh, in Kentucky, like, looking out the doorway and, like, something would just walk by. And it, my parents were in bed. It wasn't. My sister was asleep in the top bunk. But it would, like, walk by the doorway. And then I remember she moved into the playroom. 
so I was in my room by myself, and I remember something mm-hmm. something standing at the edge of my the end of my bed. Eee. Yeah. How old would you have been at the time? Um, probably like five, six, seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then yeah. It, you know, once we left Kentucky, I never saw anything in my room again. We also live next yeah. door to a graveyard, so who freaking knows, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, and I'm just, like, sensitive to that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. But I read about it, and it's, like, they're, they're – I don't – it's – they call it, like, a phenomenon where, you know, kids will see their – it's, like, people – you can go to Reddit, and, like, people will be, like, oh, yeah, something, like – it was like this big figure. This is what it looked like. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God, that's what I saw. Other people like it. It'll actually sit on their bed. So yeah, well, I'm a really, like, I know. And I think I've said this before. Like and the kids are like, I'm scared of monsters. And I'm like, what do I say? Like, I can't be like, yeah, this is... I'm like, yeah, sucks. Sucks. Sorry. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're probably benevolent monsters. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Me too, kid. Me too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me tell you about the real monsters, humans. <laughs> That's also true. Uh, like, uh, I mean, and I think, I, 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 whenever I have seen, and I think this is why I've never been a big fan of horror movies in particular, I remember seeing Hellraiser as a kid when I was far too young and it really messed me up. I did not like it at all. And Is that the guy with um, the pin, pin, pin? Yeah, pin Pinhead, head. yeah, and the whatever the hell they're called demons yeah. um again somebody screaming at us and um i i think though as this went on and i've got more attachment with horror movies and i've seen more and kind of know the stuff in that genre that's interesting to me like certain psychological ones have really stuck with me and like have had me like like even into my adult life have i've been like I am um, all the lights are on the house until I go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I need Sasha there to protect me. Obviously, I mean, like, like, like she would protect me. She would be. <laughs> She'd she be like, like over. Hey, Hellraiser! Hey, 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 friend! <laughs> I, I mean, getting them all sort of rubber butt or whatever. Vote for probably. me! Vote for me! Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> give me a treat! Give me a treat! Uh, so, um, so like, uh, but like you know, things like. Um, I remember like Babadook and mm. It Follows and things like that in recent years, just really kind of, cause, and they're also kind of psychological as well, and they're about other themes and stuff that are kind of hard-hitting. But yeah, it's uh, definitely not things that help us sleep anyway, going yeah. to see horror movies. For me, <laughs> the one that got me as a kid was Pet Cemetery. I've never seen it. I don't, don't think I want to. Don't. No. It's like they... they it's like the kid comes back from the dead. They're like logging trucks. The kid's, kid gets hit by a logging truck. And then they, they realize like they buried the, the cat. And I'm not going to go into the whole thing. But it was so. Yeah. I'd already read the book probably. Yeah. Right. I read I read something the other day. This is off topic. But like the problem with Gen X is that we all read Stephen King too early in life. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like. Uh, yeah. And then I, I, I think I had. I saw the movie. It was like. I don't know. I must have been in middle elementary, middle school, middle school. Uh-huh. And I couldn't. I just can't. It's still like I will never watch that movie again. It was so scary. I've read the book probably four or five times since. But yeah. it's so scary. I can watch a horror movie. I can't do it by myself. Yeah. But like I'll watch. I love horror. Uh, yeah, I think. Can't, uh, I've can't, come to I like camp, it more. campy horror is like more yeah. my jam, but uh, I like psychological horror and I like murder. You like like a, a hereditary or something like that? That was or, weird. Uh, yeah. Is that the same director that did movie. Mother? Yeah. No, no. I think he did, if I'm right, it's Ari Aster. He also did oh. Summer. Um, oh, that was, yeah, I saw that one too. It's also freaky. Uh, Bo is afraid, which is an insane. That is, that is. I haven't watched that one yet. I I don't know that I'd recommend that movie. These it are all like, like waking movies Mike would yeah. hate. <laughs> yes. Oh, I I think Bo is afraid is a movie that most reasonable people would hate. I, though I think as an experience, I it's there's nothing else like. I'm glad I saw it, but I don't know that I could ever recommend it to somebody. I'm gonna watch it just because. Yeah, yeah. I like. I like. You will. You will love some of the stuff in it, I think, but okay. it's it's insane. It's it is like a waking nightmare. It's kind of, 
I don't want to spoil it. It's fine. No, I'll watch it, then I'll blame you for whatever I feel. (laughs) (laughs) Mike's Mike's furious with me. (laughs) I know, right? Yeah, Yeah. you told me to watch this. (laughs) I did, I did. (laughs) Uh, Um, So, I would say if you, okay, I want, I have something I want to read. Okay. So I love folklore. Sure. Um, and you ever hear the term the witching hour? I have. Okay. So like the witching hour is between like, usually like two and four, like 3 a.m., you know? Yeah. So uh, in folklore, the witching hour or the devil's hour is the time of the night that is associated with supernatural events um, where things are thought to appear to be at their most powerful. Mm-hmm. Ah. So, that's scary. and I, that's usually, I, that is when I wake up. Yeah. I like, <clears throat> with stuff like that, uh, you know, I'm sure plenty of people will be cynical and whatnot, uh-huh. is that, and the more I learn about stuff, the, you know, limits to what we know as humans about the world and existence and everything it's we know a fraction of it, a tiny fraction of it so who knows do you know what i mean like and and uh, i love you know concepts of these you know uh, in stories and stuff like that where you know the kind of uh wall between us and the supernatural gets thinner at certain times of, of the day and it's like uh, and who knows right <laughs> we have we have literally no idea you know mm-hmm. so what do they uh, call it the, know, the veil between yeah. the between the things and yes yeah, certain times of day certain times of year you know that veil is is thinner and yeah i don't yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know i don't i believe in that i, I believe in the fact that i know nothing <laughs> that's exactly it and that's the important thing for that everybody should believe is that you know fuck all. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we all know fuck all we all know fuck all and i just get comfortable with that because it's fine it's fine yeah yeah and like the older um, i get the more i realize the less i know or that I yeah, know nothing. exactly, exactly. Yeah, and it's and it's okay to live in that, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's just people who seem to think that they've got stuff figured out that are, uh, you know. Yeah. Getting the most trouble uh, in my in my experience. I'm gonna send them a box of strawberries that are <laughs> going <laughs> going to seed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I wanted to ask you uh, was. Because, like, I, I wonder whether the, you have a, the same experience with this as me. Because of my relationship with sleep, I have, in my memory, in my lifetime, various nights of sleep that were so incredible that I will remember them forever. <laughs> do you have nights of sleep like that? I do. And, and do, do you have any good examples? I do. I have a really good one. My favorite one um, was Christmas Eve. Of, I think I was seven. Mm-hmm. And I remember closing my eyes and opening them. And I had fallen asleep, right to sleep and I woke up and it was Christmas morning already. Oh, amazing. So I didn't have to wait at all. It was just like, close my eyes, open them. Oh my God, oh. I'm already there. Like Christmas is already here. What's a dream? It was so wonderful. It was so yeah, wonderful. Really nice. So yeah, that's, I would say that's my top, that's my top one. I, I do remember that it has brought, I, I have I have three. Okay. <laughs> that's you just reminded me of another one. I remember getting on a flight one time and just, and it was like uh. after a number of different flights, I just, I just remember putting my belt on and I remember waking up and we were landing and I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is incredible. It wasn't like a long flight. It was like two or three hours, but still it was pretty fantastic. Um, the other one was, um, or I've got two others that are, 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 are um, so one was whenever I was doing my um Amtrak journey around the US, um I as far as I recall, we stayed in a hostel that was in the Presidio. Mm-hmm. So like the Presidio is like the the, the old military base. So I'm sure you know where it is. Uh, this old military base in like uh, San Francisco, and there was this massive, uh, hall with like loads of bunks in it. And we had been traveling a lot. We hadn't had a ton of sleep. And I remember like my friend was going out to do something. I was like, I'm just gonna you know go for a nap. And I remember, like, I think I slept for, like, 12 hours. I woke up, and I was like, I could do anything. <laughs> I'm so well-rested. <laughs> and I still remember how incredible I felt from that night, night of sleep. Um, the last one that really sticks in my head is, and it's why I still love hammocks to this day, is that, like, whenever I was in Thailand, there was a lot of, like, uh, a lot of the accommodation that we stayed in had hammocks outside. And I remember, like, 
in being in the jungle and just listening to all the jungly noises and just getting into this hammock close my eyes and like sleep I'd, it, it was more of a nap than a sleep again but it was like just so restful and just uh, and I just woke up feeling incredible it was it was so nice I have a photo of you from Portugal when we went uh, surfing and you found a hammock mm-hmm. and then you were just like <laughs> oh yeah I did I felt and I was like as well. I'm taking a picture <laughs> of this and you're you're yeah. snoring and then you had like a little sunburn on like the one part the, the sun <laughs> I have that you got hit with <laughs> Yes, I did. I got really burnt down. I was so stupid. <laughs> I there are quite a few photos of me in hammocks actually, because like there's and uh, there is like probably the most ridiculous one when I was in Australia, and um, then for for reason unknown for well you know because I was there with some of my friends who were just being idiots, we tore the sleeves off all our t-shirts for that trip. Uh, I at that point had grown my beard really long, had really long hair, and I just decided I was gonna like so I I took a razor and just like cut down so you know the cheeks just before my cheeks kind of hit my lips sort of took the razor down both sides of there so I had these like big mutton chop sideburns this big moustache and I was wearing my like uh, gold um, aviator shades <laughs> uh, it's the most ridiculous photo ever and we need to use it to promote okay. this episode I'll, I'll find it for you okay. so uh-huh. showing your we call them guns your arms showing yes. your big guns yeah, exactly. So if you could wish one thing about your sleep, what would it be? Uh, well, I mean, I would like it to be more consistent. That's that's it. I don't even need, you know, uh, eight hours every night. I would just lo- like it. I like. I would like it to be a bit more reliable, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, because there's things I want to do day after day. And then... Um, if I'm not well rested, I don't do them and I get caught in this, you know, spiral of being angry I can't do them and angry that I didn't sleep and then, you know and round and round we go, and you know. And round and round we go. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. I would say like I think this is the thing I dislike most about myself mm. that I can't sleep. And the yeah, impact and the impact it has, and the fact that I have to take medicine for it. For a long yeah. time, I was embarrassed about it. You know, like dating someone, like when Mike and I first started dating, and I'm just like, I don't like trying to like explain this to someone. And yeah. you know, like now our bed, it's like we're it's a king size, but it's two twin mattresses that are pushed together. Yeah. Because I move so much and I'm up and down all night, mm-hmm. and he's like, I have to sleep, like. And he keeps threatening. He's like, at some point, we're getting twin mattresses, and they're going to be separated. And I'm like, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll just put the cuddle pillow in between, and I won't, like, exactly. come after you, I promise. But, like, one of the things, because he doesn't like to cuddle, but, like, one of the things that helps mm-hmm. me fall asleep is, if, like, if he's the little spoon and I'm the big spoon, mm-hmm. and then I mm-hmm. shove my arm, basically, in his armpit. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that, uh, that is the thing that will calm me down and put me to sleep. And like, for the first couple of years, he was like, "Okay, fine." And then yeah. after that, he was just like, "No, this is not well, working this, for this me." Is for me. I, I need to sleep too. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, uh, I now that I'm on antidepressants, I'm less upset about it, and that like yeah. it, it, it's, it's become less of like a con, like the constant like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like cycle, irritation. All the yeah, all yeah. the time. Didn't get this. Yeah, like because of this, X, Y, and Z now can't happen, and like yeah. yes, and then trying to rage nap never works, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just crossing your arms, gritting your teeth, and going sleep, <laughs> sleep my. Uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah. And it just yeah, that just doesn't work at all. Man. So um, yeah, I don't even want listeners to give us tips and tricks because it I. We've probably tried them all, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have any, yeah. Uh, well, whatever. Or remedies. Yeah. Or some, really, or some really sweet drugs you could send us. <laughs> Basically, please. <laughs> it's just, just class A shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, or you know, maybe, maybe. I I just wonder if we're we're a world that is full of insomniacs and like why that is. Because I, I think yeah yeah I mean Mike, he'll lay down, and wake up in the same position. 
Wow, incredible. I, I can't do that at all. I definitely move around a lot in my sleep. I'm rolled. Like, even getting comfortable to even try to get to sleep is a, a process for me, you know? What's your sleep routine? Yeah. Um, what do you mean? Like, like um, uh, do you have a cup of tea and then you get your jammies on and then you read a book or do you watch, um, check your... Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I suppose... I do like to read before I go to sleep. I it's a curse I, I think I've, what I mentioned earlier was I'm, I'm getting inspired at night I think I need to start keeping a pen and paper beside my bed instead because the iPad is a curse because I prefer to read if possible um, to go to sleep but like um, so ordinarily I try to like give myself about half an hour before uh, I actually need to get to sleep so I can read my book or something you know but um, it doesn't always work that way and then I look I have iPad and I'm like on Reddit for half an hour instead and reading Am I the asshole posts, which do, do not help me go to sleep. Those are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but then, and then of course, then of course I put on uh, my Victorian sleeping gown and sleeping cap <laughs> and uh, I blow out my candle and I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Americans are going to love this. I know <laughs> this is exactly what they expect from me. <laughs> my dad actually had one of those. Was like, he was like, oh, this is the same so one that Benjamin Franklin had. <laughs> it's like, okay. Incredible. I know. And he wore it uh, for a while. Um, do, you, uh, do you have a sleeping uh, routine? You know, um, yeah, like we'll have a cup of tea, like get, get, I'll get the kids in bed and then sometimes we'll like watch a show or read a book and the dog will be in the bed Mm-hmm. And then nice. we'll drink our tea, and then I, I usually take my medication like an hour to an hour and a half before I need to be asleep asleep because it takes. Mm-hmm. And then if it doesn't kick in, then I'll have a glass of wine, and I know that's not you're not supposed to do that, but you know what? I need to effing sleep. If it works for you, mm-hmm. yeah. So I'll have like a half a glass of wine, and then lay down, and then uh, try and rage sleep. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, and then if that doesn't work. Then I'll get my phone out and I will read advice columns. Yeah, and perfect. then usually that will put me to sleep. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I yeah I yeah I was reading some advice columns today. They always make me feel better about myself. I know. I know. <laughs> so I'm like, oh okay, I'm not that messed up. Is this this is a relief? I'm still um, laughing about the guy that's like upset about people not eating birthday cake. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I, I I I must send you that one. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> The, uh, yeah, so you're talking about uh, starving in the bed. Like, I, so Sasha, especially in the colder months, uh, hops in my bed. It's My bed's a wee bit high for her, so she doesn't really, can't really be arsed making the effort a lot of the time. You can get her doggies, you can get her little doggy stairs. I know, stare. I should get her doggy stairs. Yeah. But here's the thing, she doesn't stay for long, and like, uh, especially because I move around for, for so much, like, oftentimes, by the time I'm reading my book, she will already be snoring. I like upside down snoring in the bed. <laughs> and then like when I am ready for sleep, I move around so much as like for fuck's sake. And then just like <laughs> she gets irritated. She's just t- tired by my <laughs> shit. And I'm like, oh, sorry, darling. Uh, but what can you do? <laughs> what can you do? I mean, it's reasonable to be annoyed at that. I mean, she needs her sleep too, you know. She does. And it's irritating. I get it. I get it. Yep. Like, we're irritated about it, too, so... Exactly. <laughs> but then she also gets to sleep all the time. <laughs> she gets to they sleep can all day sleep. long. Oh, dogs, oh, dogs are freaking excellent I, sleepers. I, like, w- next next lifetime, I want to come back as, like, <sighs> a dog and just Me too. have the best owners and be, like, fed treats and, and nap and just sleep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Do you have well, any I other questions? Yeah, I think we're... I don't think so you complain about anything else do i want to complain about everything else i should uh, do you want to get the list out right the list <laughs> the list of things i want to complain about no this is joy no. time this is joy corner it is it's joy time i have joy time i have nothing else left to complain about um okay so i guess so yeah i do have a thing so um i was able to go down after not having the opportunity because i've been so busy for months now i to go down and see some good friends um, over the past over the past weekend, um, I love it. I really need to tell them this, um, but like it is my we oasis, especially over COVID and stuff like that. Being able to go down and visit them, spend time with them, and their son was fantastic because they they both love playing board games. So like 
at one period of the weekend I, I set my phone down somewhere I didn't know where it was and I was like and we just ended up playing like board games for like four or five hours in the evening and I was like this is just what I needed I needed to completely disconnect spend time with people whose company I love mm-hmm. and it was uh, just what I needed and it was very lovely so that, that's been bringing me joy this week that sounds fabulous um, it was and <clears throat> I'm editing uh, the last week's episode where we bitch about phones <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> then, mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah shaking my fist uh, at that we, exactly what's been bringing you to this um show, i'm reading the princess bride Ooh. have you read it i have not please read it it's one okay. of the best books i've ever read okay uh it's so much better than like the movie i'm sorry everyone it is so much better than the movie and the movie is one of my favorite things ever the book is so funny. Can I be honest with you? I don't think I knew. No, I was going to say, I don't think I knew that it was a book until you said it there, but I've, I've just done looked it up and I see the cover and I'm like, actually that looks familiar. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So it's uh William Goldman and he, he did a bunch of movies and like he wrote screenplays and, but yeah, he, I recognize his name. Yeah, yeah. So, but he wrote this amazing book and like, there's so much more in the book uh than in the movie and like he's also like narrating his writing of the book so he like he'll be like okay we're taking a break from the princess bride and like here's like that. it's like me that. now right and it's so funny yeah. so it's like go, you're like going through his life with him as he's writing this and it's it's just like i'm reading the parts the funny parts the good parts right to the kids but then i'm yeah. reading you know the more adult because it's an adult book um and it's 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 great and I'm I, actually I, I, reading a paper book, which always makes me feel like yeah. I'm her- hearkening back to the good times. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I try to these days as much as possible, mix between the two, you know, but easier said than done sometimes. It's true. I, I, um, yeah, I, I, I think I, yeah, I definitely will enjoy it. And I love that sort of, I know what I going to say, was the, um, that idea of, you know, the sort of untra- untraditional narratives in books, like them really taking a step back and doing like, you know, like also in... Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas yeah. and things like that, where yeah. it's just like, there'll be a chapter and how it's written and how it's kind of put together is just unlike anything you've read before. It's yeah. always lovely. That so is this, and sound... I highly recommend it oh, okay. to you okay. and to our um, listeners. Um, ordering it immediately. Yeah, and he, I think he passed away in like 2022 and I was sad. Or oh, okay. Maybe Wait. before that, but yeah, I, I just adore his style. So give him a, I give him it. a read. Yeah, so get, send those uh, royalties just, somewhere, just, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, but yeah, I think we're coming to the end of this week's episode. Um, so folks, um, as always, we would like to remind you to stay, stay bendy. bendy. Yeah, we killed it. I'm still going. <laughs> <laughs> One hour. I think I took we a love breath. You. <laughs> love you. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. What a cheat. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Bendy, a Beth and Andy podcast. We love having you here with us each week, so keep those ideas and feedback coming. If you haven't already, please follow and subscribe to Bendy on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, and YouTube. You can listen to all of our episodes and submit ideas for future podcast topics at bendypodcast.com. Next week's episode focuses on one of our more favorite things to talk about, pets, where we discuss why we have pets, our favorite pets, and ideal pet names in an ideal world. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for being here with us. You always have a friend with Bendy.